Welcome all to Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, where we shine a light on incredible individuals and organizations and the work that they do. I am your host, Josh Basil. I'm a C45 quadriplegic, paralyzed below my shoulders, and a power wheelchair user. I'm the Community Relations Manager here at Accessibility and a passionate disability rights advocate and attorney focused on breaking down barriers to access and inclusion for people with disabilities. Today on Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, we're joined by Maggie Goldberg, the CEO uh, of the Christopher and Dana Reed Foundation. Welcome, Maggie. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate you having me on today. So I'm, I'm so glad you're here today. And I'm, I know the audience can't wait to learn more about yourself. So tell us a little bit more. Well, I am a uh, white middle-aged woman with bl blonde hair and bluish gray eyes. I'm wearing a blue shirt, which happens to be, I think, the same exact color as what you're wearing today. And I'm based in uh, Short Hills, New Jersey, where the headquarters of the Christopher and Dana Reed Foundation are located. Um, I have been in this position for about a year, uh, exactly a year, but I've spent the majority of my career uh, working with the Christopher and Dana Reed Foundation in, in various capacities. So um, with, within the spinal cord injury world, what, what kind of introduced you into this, into this area? That, well, tell us a little bit more about your journey. Yes, I will I'd be happy to share about my journey. So um, right after I turned 16, I was a passenger in a car accident. My friend and I were just going out for ice cream on a summer day, and uh, she made a left-hand turn too soon, and the other car was speeding. And um, the car came in, the other car came into my side, and I, was, uh, I broke my neck at the C2 level. Um, I was at the time, uh, I broke my neck in two places. My vertebrae, a piece of it was uh, broken off and lodged next to my spinal cord. And, you know, I was I just turned 16. Um, I was in neck braces, physical therapy. I was hospitalized for eight days. I did not have neurological damage. I was extremely lucky. Um, but I knew that, you know, because of that injury and the time in my life, my, my life had changed. And I promised myself that I would try not to take things for granted as much as I had up to that point. Um, I went to the University of Pennsylvania for my undergrad degree and thought I was gonna be a lawyer, like you. <laughs> and uh, when it came time to graduate, I really couldn't answer the question, like why did I wanna be a lawyer? So I knew I wanted to do advocacy and I moved to Washington DC and I worked on Capitol Hill and found my passion there. And fast forward a couple years, I, um, had uh, was lucky enough to be introduced to a very small boutique uh, public relations firm in Washington called Wittick Combs Communications. And at the time, they had just landed the Christopher Reeve Foundation and also the American Paralysis Association. So I was hired as a consultant for two years. I worked very closely with both Christopher and Dana Reeve. I helped to oversee the merger of the two organizations. I traveled all over the country. Um, and then uh, in 2000, the foundation, we were so small at the time, we didn't even have a head of communications. So they offered me the role and I moved to New Jersey. And so um, I, I guess you could say I worked my <laughs> way up the ranks, as you say, and I oversaw um, advocacy, branding, marketing, communications, and public relations. That was really my bread and butter until 2013. And then I left um, and I went to become head of public relations for a major metropolitan hospital here in New Jersey. And then I came back to oversee our National Paralysis Resource Center in very late 2014. In 2019, I became um, the chief operating officer and last year I was appointed president and CEO by our board. Um, I'm so, I love that you became the CEO because I, I love, I've known you for so many years and you've it's been doing such great work and you're just a great captain of the ship over at the Reef Foundation. So tell, tell us more about the work that the Christopher and Dana Reef Foundation is doing these days. So really it's, you know, our tagline says it all. Today's care, tomorrow's cure. So um, when it comes to the care side, we oversee the National Paralysis Resource Center in cooperation with a grant from the Administration for Community Living. And this is not just spinal cord injury, but we are here to help people navigate paralysis of any kind, any neurological um, disease, injury, disorder, diagnosis. It could be, you know, the day it happens, or it could be 20, 30, 40, 50 years later. Um, so we are teamed with information specialists who are here to answer any question. We have peer mentors all over the country um, that are volunteers, they're trained, they're, they're uh, background checked, they're certified, um, really to help with the one-on-one. -on -one. So if you're a caregiver, if you're a spouse, if you're an individual living with paralysis, 
you might want to just have a question about recurring UTIs. Um, you know, we call those one and done. Or you may want someone, you might be home from the hospital and you're like, I don't even know how to navigate my community. I need someone to physically go out with me and show me how do I navigate the mall? How do I go to a, a baseball game? We can help you do that. Um, we also provide quality of life grants to other nonprofits all around the country who are assisting people in the here and now. We have a military and veterans program, um, and we have a huge education program. So we have um, webinars and toolkits and brochures and anything you could possibly imagine to help um, acclimate to paralysis. For the last four decades, the Reed Foundation has helped galvanize the, the spinal cord injury research field. And um, now scientists agree that paralysis cures are not just a matter of if, but when. So our research program is focused on collaboration. It's focused on translational, high-profile scientific endeavors with potential to move the needle to market-ready products. So right now, our ultimate goal is commercialized, broadly available treatments. And um, that's, that's really our goal. We're here to, we, we're here to provide cures. Um, when I started with the Reed Foundation, 20 plus years ago, we talked about a cure. It was walking, um, stepping, standing, and that's still the ultimate goal, right? But all of the incremental improvements along the way are considered cures. So if we can find a cure for bowel, bladder, sexual dysfunction, uh, blood pressure, temperature control, pain, those are all cures. And then we it's also- have, Sorry? Life-changing. Exactly. Like, it's any, all any one of those things is it's absolutely life-changing. Yeah, absolutely. And and really, our, our investment in epidural stimulation is a treatment because it's not repairing the spinal cord necessarily or, or restoring, restoring function as we think of it, but it's helping, again, like life-changing uh, life changing treatment. So that's another, you know, change in the vernacular since I've been here for 20 years. So it's all really- even, even partial gains can be life-changing. It's, it's incredible. Thing, like being paralyzed below my shoulders, having just one or two fingers of functionality. Yes, it's not a whole hand, but it get, it, it just changes their ability to grasp and uh, handle the your everyday life. Mm -hmm. And um, but there's so many different parts of of the body that branch out with your spinal cord, and it's it's not like a a condition or a disease that. Most people have similar functionalities with but with the paralysis world. Every level right. is a different is a different world. That's right. Um, every, every no injury is the same, and that's why it's so hard, you know, to cure or to or to find it. You know, it's it, every single injury is different. Um, what may work for one person may not work for the other. So that's why it's really important that we continue to raise funds and we we try to fund everything out there because we want to be able to provide, you know, all the um, promising treatments to everyone who who may need them. I know that was always a dream of of Christopher Reeve to be able to make that happen. And he always said he wished it could happen in his lifetime. But I, when I was, I was injured August 1st, 2004, and I was still in, an inpatient when when Christopher Reeve passed away mm -hmm. in that October. That's um, right. And then I had, which was, you know, the truth is before my injury, I knew nothing really about disability. I didn't have any kids in my school that had um, a significant disability, um, um, a physical disability. And, um, but my only kind of touch to the disability world was that Superman That's right. um, became paralyzed. And that was, that was crazy hard when he passed away, when I was still just getting weaned off like a ventilator. And, and it was just, it was really dark days. But then when I returned home, I, uh, I ended up like a few months later, got to meet Dana mm, and she great. changed my world, her smile, her ability, her heart. She just was the most warm, welcoming person I could ever imagine. Like she was a celebrity to me in my eyes. Like I was just like in awe of her. And I remember I went to go meet her and Brooke Ellison at a conference. And the next day I came back for the dinner and there was about a thousand people in the audience. And she was giving like a keynote speech and all of a sudden, about 10 minutes into her speech, she locks eyes with me. She's like, Josh, I didn't know you were coming. I like just literally like, I was like, did she just do that? She just give me that shout out. 
I'll never forget that from Dana. She's amazing. Man. That was Dana. That was her to a T. You know, she used to, she, what you saw was what you got. I mean, she really was so passionate and she used to come to the office and pour through the quality of life grant applications with us. She knew every single staff member's name. She really was so passionate about this community and um, it was such a loss. So I'm glad you have that memory. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, and I would love to know, so you're telling us all the great things that the Ray Foundation's doing and now kind of what does your day-to-day -day look like these days? So the fun thing about being uh, in this role is that no two days ever look alike, right? So I might be working on fundraising one day. I could be working on our advocacy efforts from Washington, D.C. I could be working, I work a lot with our board of directors. I'm working on long-term vision and, and um, strategy and planning. Um, I'm, I'm reshaping our leadership team right now. We just hired a new uh, chief scientific officer, Marco Bautista. So uh, we're reimagining what our research program is going to look like. So it's, it's actually a really exciting time. For as long as I've been here, I feel like it's a rebirth. Um, you know, obviously things that keep me up at night are, you know, raising enough money to fund research, um, making sure we're not duplicating what other organizations are doing. Uh, my, one of my priorities is really collaboration and working with as many other organizations as we can to fulfill the needs and the, and the mission, um, uh, the needs of our community and the mission of our foundation collectively. So that's really important. Um, but that's what I enjoy. You know, like I said, I, you know, some days I'm out on the road with community members. Some days I'm working very closely with our staff, um, but it's, it's, it's really, um, it's very challenging, but very gratifying as well. And if any of our viewers and businesses want to learn more about uh, about the Re Foundation, where can they go and where, how can they find ways to donate or contribute? Well, uh, you can always go to ChristopherReeve.org. That's our website. And all of our social channels are at Reeve Foundation. We are um, in September going to be relaunching our website, which is very long overdue. So we're excited about that. Um, and there are many ways to get involved, actually. You can, you can donate. You can be a corporate underwriter for our summit. We have a summit um, coming up October October 13th and 14th in Washington, D.C. We have our annual gala in New York City. Um, we have uh, regional events. We're having one in Houston on September 20th. Um, you can become, if you want to you know, not donate, but you want to volunteer, you can become an advocate and get involved in our advocacy program. That's also something you can sign up for online. Um, I mentioned the peer mentor program, so you can, you can do that as well. Or um, we have people participate in fundraisers, individual fundraisers. So you can either become a Team Reeve All-Star or you can join Team Reeve and run or roll a marathon. We have spots in uh, New York City and Chicago. And next year we're hoping to expand even further. So there's tons of ways to get involved or um, raise money. And we're, you know, you can always call us as well. Um, and you can, we'd be happy to talk and be, get creative. I love that. Um, there's three foundation. There's you guys are always busy. There's always something going on, something you're doing, somewhere trying to, to, to shake up and change the world. So I love that. And <laughs> thank so you. So I I would love to know more about like what is it? What is one of achievement over the years um, with being a part of the Reef Foundation that you're most proud of? So on Onward um, has an ARC therapy, which can be delivered right now via transcutaneous stimulation, but it's going to also be available in implantable as well. And this delivers targeted program stimulation of the spinal cord to restore movement and function. And um, they have received breakthrough device designation from the FDA. And so I think that what I'm most proud of is this is like a, a different approach for Reeve. It's new, it's end-to-end -end support. It represents an innovative model for this nonprofit industry partnership. And I think I'm really proud that the Reeve Foundation identified and helped speed this technology from the lab to the clinic. And, and this is extremely promising right now. So um, I would say within the Reeve Foundation, that's what I'm probably most proud of recently. I think I'm all, if I may, <laughs> I'd also like to add that um, I'm really proud of the culture that we've that we've created among the staff. Um, we have a, a we when we um, created our we launched our strategic plan in the beginning of 2020, and part of that was to create core values. 
And so we created a core values and culture committee that's staff driven. And so we have educational training, like lunch and learn. So it's it's a brand new culture within the staff. And you know we're trying with this hybrid environment and a third of our staff are fully remote. And I'm just really proud of, um, I think as a leader, I'm most proud of kind of leading authentically. And I'm very, always say I'm very transparent. And, you know, I, I just have a tendency to say things like they are. And I'm kind of, I'm proud that that's continued even in this role today. Well, that, and that's I'm proud like, of my staff for embracing the, the core values as well. Well, they're very lucky to have you. As, Thank you. As the cap, I'd love to say the captain of the ship because that's, <laughs> you're leading, you're leading the, the foundation. It's the direction that's going in. Got a lot of great crewmates. I do. Yeah. I do. We've got a great um, team. And I also try to, you know, I also try to um, foster like a family friendly work environment. I think that I try to model and lead by example. It's not, you know, a working mom. And I try to, um, I try to model good behavior and, and, and good values. And I hope that um, people want, want to work here. They want to work hard because they know that ultimately we value um, family and, and, you know, quality of life as well. So this is a perfect segue. You just said quality of life again. What does what does that mean to you? What does that mean to the paralysis community? Like, let's talk more about quality yeah. of life. So for me, I think quality of life really means um, access, opportunity. You know, just because you are using a wheelchair, Josh, doesn't mean that you shouldn't be able to have access to do the same thing that I can. You know, you should be able to have a family. You should be able to go to whatever restaurant you want to or movie theater. You should be able to work. Um, you should be able to take part in in extracurricular activities. So for me, it's 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 that access and opportunity. I think the other thing is just, you know, living with spinal cord injury is not easy, as you know, all too well. And we talked about every injury being different. A lot of people live in pain. So, you know, if you are living in constant pain, it's hard to have quality of life. So I think that's why at the Reed Foundation, we're so focused on both the care and the cure side, because it's really important that um, we think of, of, of quality of life. You know, the del I, I talk about, you know, the delivery of the cure through the care side. So, um, I, I, you know, I think that opportunity is so important, but I think also making sure that people are, are, are living well and have the equipment that they deserve and should be able to access affordably as well. And so much about quality of life or especially in the spinal cord population is getting access to the physical therapy, getting access to the equipment so that you actually can keep your body healthy. Like I always, I like to say like I, I exercise a good 20 to 25 hours a week so that one day I can meet science halfway for that cure. Mm -hmm. So my body is ready, but at the same time, putting, investing that 20 to 25 hours a week, I'm able to stay out of the hospital because I'm right. able to create muscle in between my skin and my bones to not get pressure sores. And there's a million little things that if you don't use it, you lose it with your body. You kind of have to maintain it even, even if you can't, you know, physically move it yourself. We've been talking about like transcutaneous stimulation. There's electrical stimulation, like these pads, mm -hmm. people, with spinal cord injuries put on their muscles over their, on their skin and it stimulates their muscles. And it's, mm -hmm. it's incredible the technology that exists today to like keep us moving and keep us healthy. That's and, right. Um, but when you think about those, you know, 20 to 25 hours, plus your father, you know, plus your working, plus the time it takes you to get, I mean, that's, that's, that's a huge commitment. And, um, you know, life shouldn't be as hard as, as it is, you know, our society needs to do a lot more for, for, friends living with disabilities. And I, I, I've been definitely, the, the beauty of the, the 20 to 25 hours is I get to do a lot of it in parallel. Like I get a dad, be a dad while I'm doing it. Like it, I, I bring my, my exercise bicycle or my standing frame in front of the TV. We do family movie night or we do like little things where I'm able to, to, to make sure I, I'm not always, you know, having to flip one switch or another, being quadriplegic or being a parent or a family man. Um, so it's, we find ways and we keep on keeping on and, um, but it's, uh, no, it's, I, when I was paralyzed 18 years ago, I didn't know what my life would be like, um, at this point, like I've now lived half my life 
on my two feet and half my life on my wheels. And it's, it's definitely, all I gotta say is with the right attitude, with a, a willingness to try, ability to be a little creative, life goes on in beautiful ways. And um, I do owe so much to the Reef Foundation for getting me to where I am in my journey today. I don't think I could have done it alone without you guys. Oh, that's really so nice to hear. Here. Thank you. Well, we'll always be here for you and we're always here for everyone else. So you're a shining example of, you know, what can be. And I think that you can teach others, you know, the ultimate multitasker. And you're also an example. If you put your minds to something, you have a goal, you can achieve it. So you've been incredible. It's been, it's been an honor to watch you over all these years as well. Yeah, you're awesome. Now I feel I old. <laughs> I, I feel privilege and honor to be able to call you a friend, a mentor, and yeah. all the above. Thank so you uh, I think we're, we're at our, you should like to keep these to about 22 minutes. Okay, so sorry to run late. Thank you, thank you so much for being our guest today and to all of our, our uh, attendees for staying till the end. And um, uh, everyone, until next time, uh, this is Accessory Spotlight Sessions. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Josh.